it hasn't been hard for us to get hospital systems on board predominantly. They they for sure understand the problem. And I think that's also true with medical training. They also understand the problem and the ACGME, which is the accreditation body for residency training, actually put into the curriculum the specific requirements now to address well, well, well-being. So I think everybody knows that it needs to be addressed. I think the more challenging thing, and this is what I found in like applications in real world, is that the system's not set up for that. So like if you look at residency training, they have accreditation requirements, other accreditation requirements that need to be met in training, capacities that need to be met while they're in that training. So you could put well-being in there, but is there actually time for it? So that's that's the question I've been thinking a lot about lately. Like, yeah, you can have all these other requirements, but if the system isn't actually set up that people can do that in an effective way because there's balance, it's it's really probably not going to be that effective. And even in our programming, physicians are doing it either before or after work. It's not happening during work time. Because that would probably also stress people out more, but there's no built-in time. And I think this is one of the the issues that has changed in medicine a lot. If you talk to the different generations of physicians, you know, as soon as the EHR came in, the electronic health record changed a lot of how much essentially clerical work they're doing in addition to the practice of medicine. And now there's things like my chart, which is great for patients, but it also adds an additional burden. And no extra time got added to physicians in order to do these things. You Actually, now what hospitals are doing, because after COVID, they're struggling, is they're increasing patient loads, not decreasing them. So what's happening as technology evolves is that there are more demands on physicians than there were before and less time to do it. So it's sort of, again, you can ask people to do well-being, but how does that realistically fit into something that's tangible? And I think that's the real problem in the field right now. Yeah, that I mean, that question in my mind, that's something I think about a lot. And I don't have a good answer for that because I think the reality is that it it doesn't necessarily fit in well unless you sacrifice some other metric or financial outcomes. And I know a lot of healthcare systems are really struggling financially. And they're they're figuring out like what what programs can we cut to survive or how many more patients can we see? But unfortunately, physicians are really the ones who are bearing much of the brunt of that. Nurses, as, of yeah. course, as well. Yeah, yes, of course. Healthcare providers in general are, you know, getting this burden. So what do you, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, this so this question, I'll have to say, this has come up a lot one form or another, the tension between the business case for healthcare systems to survive and well-being and people supporting well-being and wanting to address burnout, but not being able to go all the way to create the policies that are actually going to make a difference. And workload is one of the, you know, statistically significant drivers of burnout. 